the Hoosiers are one day closer to a huge top 10 matchup against Cincinnati this weekend, but they sound pretty confident uh, heading into that contest. We will get you caught up on everything they have said during press conferences this week, as well as giving you all the information over the last week with the men's and women's soccer team here in just one moment. On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Man, that intro never gets old. For those of you listening, that won't make sense, but uh, the intro for our new YouTube channel is amazing. I've watched it every time that uh, we have run it. It is, it is awesome. The guys here at Locked On, the Locked On Network have done a great job. But welcome into the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I am your host, as always, Jacob Rude, bringing you the latest for IU Athletic News. Thank you guys for making this part of your day. As I said, we have a YouTube channel. Please head on over there and subscribe if you haven't already. We lo- launched it with Tuesday's episode. We're really excited about what is in store over there. We will iron out the kinks as we go. I'm sure there will be many, but uh, we will get those fixed along the way. There's simply no better place to get all of the news for the Big Ten Conference than with Nate Dickinson in the Locked on Big Ten podcast. Follow the Locked on Big Ten podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. We have a ton of stuff to cover today. I'm going to try to keep things short. Uh, We have quotes from Tom Allen, all the coordinators, handful of players, and then a bunch of soccer news. So if you haven't already, subscribe to Locked on Hoosiers wherever you guys listen to your podcast at. Subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm going to mention that a ton because I really, really think – that this uh, YouTube channel I'm excited to work with, and I think that they have done a great job giving us some really awesome graphics. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to mention it a lot. You can also follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers and on Instagram at Locked on Hoosiers. We're jumping right into it. Uh, On Monday, a whole host of people talked uh, following the Idaho game and leading into the Cincinnati game. I'm sure some of you saw some of the quotes coming across social media on Twitter. I tried to leave out some of the notable ones that may have come across there, unless they were extremely notable, but wanted to try to grab some stuff from every one that spoke, some notable things. Tom Allen obviously was first up. One of the first things he talked about was the offensive line. Uh, said (laughs) Said it's a group that needs to continue to develop, He also said it's a group that needs to continue to mesh, Uh, but that's about as critical as he's going to get and about any coach will get with with any group. Obviously, they are the main focus point. They've been a focus point the last three podcasts, including today. Interesting takeaway, though, he said that they run, uh, quote, good on good during practice, so basically the starting offensive line versus starting defensive line. Uh, So he said the offensive line is practicing against a really improved defensive line and uh, one of the best defenses in the country, certainly in the Big Ten, potentially the country. Uh, So you're certainly not going to get any stiffer competition than that, though Cincinnati might be able to provide it. He also spoke about Desmond Ritter, the star quarterback from Cincinnati, who is a dual threat option. These are a couple different quotes I broke together, but these are his exact words. It says he runs the ball a lot and runs really effectively. And as we all know, that puts challenges on a defense when a quarterback can do that. He runs the ball a lot, but has to be able to stay healthy. And that's a tough thing to do at this level, as we've seen with Michael Penix. Uh, really, his passing just keeps getting better and better. He's a very good football player, definitely a future NFL guy. You have that kind of guy leading your team. That's a very good formula for a lot of success. He was asked some points of emphasis heading into the Cincinnati game. Uh, He gave coach speak, basically, but it was still interesting. He said the first one is a relentless attention to detail and kind of performing in pressure moments, which the team certainly did not do in week one against Iowa. Number two was the fundamentals. Number three was communication. He said those those things come out in big games. And like I said, the Hoosiers might not have a bigger game than – 
Saturdays. Uh, potentially Ohio State's going to be the only game I would imagine coming against a higher ranked opponent, which might not even be the case now that Ohio State has lost. So certainly the formula for the biggest game of the season. Nick Sheridan also spoke, offensive coordinator. The first thing I, I wrote about that offensive line, he said the five guys that played on Saturday were the five guys that played together through most of camp, which is concerning because Tom Allen also talked about how they had communication issues those back-to-back sacks in the first half that really ugly. Uh, he said those were some communication issues and then getting beat one-on-one. Neither of those are great, and specifically if that's a group that has worked together the most, that group should not be having communication issues, uh, So especially against Idaho. So not great in that regard. He said, quote, we need to throw the ball better vertically down the field, which is something that uh, – both Penix, Fry Fogel, Sheridan, everybody kind of talked about and spoke about how that kind of being the next progression for Michael and getting him uh, connecting with those deep balls and those big plays. Last week, Sheridan talked about getting Penix in a rhythm early, which I thought they did a good job of. He spoke about it being just an odd game that it was, it was a little hard to do. He said that that first – Drive was methodical. They got him a couple of easy completions. But then after that, everything was just kind of weird. And and with the, the short fields and the punt returns and the p- blocked punts and everything, it just it was really just kind of an odd um, game from that regard. But he still said Penix made steps in the right direction, which was mirroring Tom Allen's comments about the same thing, that Penix looked better on Saturday. Still think he's going to need to take a pretty big step forward for the Cincinnati game. Said one of the big, the big keys for them is to play clean on Saturday. Can't afford the mistakes. Can't afford the penalties. They've been pretty good about penalties, at least on Saturday against Idaho. Can't afford any mistakes in those big games. He also talked a little bit about Peyton Hendershot in the tight end position. He called Saturday a unique game in reference to the tight ends, but also said he thought that they needed to get Hendershot a little more involved. So be interesting to see if that is something that happens on Saturday. We spoke about Hendershot in Tuesday's podcast. He did not grade out very well based on pro football focuses grades. I didn't think he played particularly, particularly well. So, It'll be interesting to see if they do get him more involved this week. Casey Teagarden, the special teams coach, I would have went up there with a huge smile on my face gloating, but that is why those guys are coaches and I am not. He said this success from Saturday's game and special teams created some buy-in, specifically referenced a play from practice where Noah Pierre, who made the block or had the blocked punt, had it an identical play during practice. And that kind of points out that even if it gets monotonous at times, that that's the reason they do it. He said both Reese Taylor and DJ Matthews are going to continue returning punts. Obviously, DJ Matthews had the insane return, which he said was uh, they had set up for wall blocking down the sideline, which was obvious, uh, but that DJ had to kind of go the entire other way of the field and then come all the way back. So that honestly made that play even more impressive. He also spoke about something that I had noticed uh, when watching James Evans punt, is that he specifically there was one play where he took a step right and punted way to the left. And considering how much Evans struggled in week one, I wasn't sure if that was a mistake, but actually Teagard mentioned that he does he likes to do that a lot to keep teams honest so that they know if he's taking a step to the right hash, he's not kicking to the right and vice versa on the left. So thought that was an interesting tidbit that I noticed. A couple different players spoke as well, which we will get to and tell you about uh, Penix, Tywin Mullen, Marcelino McCurry Ball, what they had to say. But we first need to talk about our friends at betonline.ag. Everybody's turning their attention to the gridiron now and bet online has you guys covered for any betting that you guys want to do. Checked earlier today, and IU is still a three and a half point favorite, though it has dropped to four and a half points. 
still an interesting line, still time for it to move. The closer we get it, the more bets will likely cl- come in. But bet online is your number one spot to pay attention to these lines, whether it's pro or college football. With the new updated site and interface, there's even more odds, props, contests. Uh, bet online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head on over there today and sign up to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up with promo code locked on. Also, don't forget to use promo code NFL100. Either one of those will get you a special bonus. So whether it's football, basketball, boxing, or right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, your online sports book experts. Charlton Warren also spoke on Saturday, or excuse me, on Monday about Saturday's game. I'm going to be honest, I don't have many concerns about the defense. And while he certainly had things to say, it, nothing was really noteworthy to me, other than the fact something I had not thought about. Warren actually played against basically this Cincinnati team as uh, he was Georgia's defensive back coach last year. Georgia met them in the Peach Bowl. That Georgia lost to them, actually. So he has kind of firsthand experience preparing for this team, which is super interesting. And you have to think a big advantage heading into this game. Both Taiwan Mullen and Marcelino McCurry Ball mentioned that as well. So certainly he's made that known in some regard. Pinnock spoke. He said he felt he had a little more rhythm in Saturday's game. Said he felt that building kind of throughout the week. This ultimately seems like something that he is just going to have to build momentum throughout the season, build that rhythm throughout the season, and hope it carries over week to week and game to game. He's going to start at the lowest point because that Iowa game obviously was not pretty. Uh, but he said, kind of speaking on those, the need for longer passes, he said the reason that they were going to shorter passes on Saturday is because – the defenders are playing so far off against the Hoosier receivers that the shorter passes are what was open. And his exact words were, take what they gave us. So they took the short routes, the couple intermediate routes, dinked and dunked their way down the field with the run game, which led to that, I believe it was an 18-play drive to start off and why there was none of those big explosive plays. Although they mentioned the one play – that went through Ty Freifogel's hands, the long pass downfield where it seemed like he mistimed his jump. He said he jumped about a half second too early and that he's watched that play multiple times. Freifogel did. So certainly he's thinking about that. It seems, I mean, those two were great downfield last season. Seems like a matter of time. It'd be really awesome if they started doing that on Saturday against Cincinnati. The two defenders who spoke, Taiwan Mullen and Marcelino Ball, Taiwan said that there's not really a sense of urgency to beat a ranked team. They, Tom Allen was asked a similar question. He gave a similar answer, mainly because there's so many ranked teams that are going to be on the schedule this season. So it's not really a sense of urgency. They're just taking it game by game. I think the biggest thing I took away from Taiwan's press conference though, was just his, his confidence and kind of his swagger just talking about the secondary and the defense. Uh, I mean, one of his quotes was just said, just the way he said it, he said, we believe in Coach Warren and his calls and we're ready. And just the way he said that, it was just like, this This defense really believes in itself. And again, outside of the very first play, or the very first drive of the season, I think it was the third play of that drive, fourth play, that huge touchdown run. Uh, from Iowa. Outside of that, this defense has been really, really damn good. So they should have a confidence and a swagger to them. And seeing how they came out right away against Idaho with a just a crazy uh, crowd and a, a great atmosphere has me really, really excited for what this team could do out of the gate against Cincinnati. It'd be interesting to see if 
if the Hoosiers win the toss, whether they I, – I think there's a decent argument to kick, defer, receive it in the second half, and put that defense out there right away with the, with those fans and with that sold-out atmosphere. That could be really interesting. If we're talking confidence and coolness, calmness, Marcelino McCreary Ball had all of it. He was actually asked what he's kind of learned the most from his freshman year to – now a span of six years and he kind of poetically took a deep breath and then said calmness and kind of talked about maturity as well as he's grown up with this Hoosier program spoke about that first half aside from the last 45 seconds said that the first half is what we want to represent our defense which showed you how kind of dynamic that the defense can be, whether it was stopping the run, whether it was um, sacking the quarterback, getting pressure or breaking up passes, things like that. But yeah, he just had a calmness and a confidence to him. The whole, the whole defense, Charlton Warren had a calmness to him. I mean, the coaches obviously do, but the players as well just had this kind of this, I don't want to use the word swagger, but that's what it feels like. Like they know that they're really good and they're confident and their coaching staff that will have them prepared. So honestly, I feel pretty good about Saturday's game after watching that, but I'm going to dive in uh, today on Wednesdays. You're listening to this to Cincinnati and get a better idea of what to expect from them. So maybe I won't feel so good for Thursday's episode. We will uh, we'll take our break now and then fill this third segment up with kind of everything else that's happened around IU Athletics that we haven't been able to catch up on before today. Before we start talking about men's soccer, uh, I know that's one of the big things we're going to talk about. I want to tell you guys about Built Bar. These guys are terrific company, terrific brand to support. Uh, they have nine delicious flavors. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they'll tell you their favorite. Give me a cookies and cream over everything. But they have coconut, coconut almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. They have anything that you could possibly want. There's a flavor for everyone. You can get all the flavors if you want, if you want to try their mixed box but on top of having all the flavors that are tasty, they are healthy as well. 17 to 18 grams of protein, only 130 to 180 calories, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. It's nine amazing flavors. They're all tasty. They're all healthy. You really don't have a reason not to order some right now. So go to BuiltBar.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your first order Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built Bar. We spoke about our friends at Bet Online earlier in the episode. We also have friends at Prize Picks, which is a really interesting website that I think I will be using this weekend. Uh, the These guys make daily fantasy sports easy. So it's a newer company. I had only just found out about them in the last week or so. I love them. I know you guys will too. They're the leader in college sports daily fantasy. They offer more props than anyone in the world for college football and offer all the star players from the Power 5 conferences and a whole bunch of players from mid-majors that you guys probably haven't even heard of. So you can do any prop, whether it's yards, touchdowns, uh, completions, receptions, any of that, or you can just make it simple and do uh, fantasy score. You can even do interceptions thrown. If you really think this uh, IU defense is going to get turnovers in that regard, they actually spoke about it, how all of their takeaways have been fumbled so far and how that they need to get more interceptions. So maybe you think uh, Ritter will throw some on Saturday. You can throw that in there as well. You can pick two to five players, take the over-under on each of their projections, and then you can win up to 10 times on any entry, and it's just you versus the projected numbers. One of the things I like as well is that you can do a flex pick, flex pick easier said than done, 
that allows you if you hit on if you do up to five, if you hit on two, three, or four, you still get your payout. So even if you miss one bet uh, or one player prop, as frustrating as that always is, just to miss out on one, you'll still make your money uh, with prize picks. They also allow mixed sport entries. So if you want to bet on some baseball or uh, maybe some MMA or something on Saturday along with the Hoosiers, you can do that. So use the award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Price Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate. Check out PricePicks.com or go to the App Store and download the app today. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. We're going to jump through this men's soccer and women's soccer stuff. If you guys missed it on Friday, uh, IU's men's soccer team went to Akron had one hell of a game. Uh, it was against a ranked Akron team, actually a traditional kind of power uh, soccer program. But the Hoosiers had their chances. Game goes to extra time. For those that don't know, in extra time, they play golden goal, which is basically first goal wins. Hoosiers had two point blank chances, but Akron, the Zips, keeper Will Myers, some incredible saves. Uh, the Hoosiers had 33 shots on the day, uh, or the two teams combined for 33 shots. The Hoosiers had 17. Seven of those were on target. They they had their chances. They looked decent offensively, but it ultimately ends up with a 1-1 draw. The offense looks alive again, even with the one goal. It's another good bounce-back effort uh, after that loss to Creighton. They'll have their Big Ten opener on Friday against Rutger. So no TV info yet. I'm not sure where or if you guys will be able to watch that. Uh, the rankings also updated this week. The coaches poll IU dropped two spots after drawing on the road with a ranked anchor t- Akron team. I don't understand that. So they're down to number 11 in the coaches poll. They're fifth in the top drawer soccer poll, which didn't change. Third in the college soccer news poll. If I had to say right now, they're somewhere between that three to five range right now certainly not 11th that same coaches poll had them number one two weeks ago so that tells you a little bit of how silly coaches polls are certainly want to throw some love to the women's soccer team who got a three nil shutout against kansas state on sunday boy did they have some impressive goals in doing so avery lockwood uh, caught the keeper off the line for the second goal in the 36th minute and then apparently everybody wanted to chip the keeper because Jen uh, Blitchock, I probably butchered that, I'm very sorry, but Jen uh, also caught the keeper off the line, although a little bit closer, chipped the keeper for the third goal in the 45th minute, and then the Hoosiers held firm in the second half. They're now 6-1-1 one, and one on the season, which is their best start since 2013. Certainly you need to give them some love as well. Paige Weber was the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. She came off the bench against Murray State last week, had a hat trick. She also had the opener against Kansas State. for the. Uh, she had the first goal in the 3-0 win. And then Jamie Gerstenberg is the freshman of the week. The Hoosiers keeper has her got her third straight shutout against Kansas State, her sixth of the season in eight games. This team is moving along. They will also have their Big Ten opener this weekend on Sunday against Michigan State. Uh, That is going to be very interesting because if the women's team continues playing well, picking up wins, they are going to start making a case to be in the rankings as well. Last thing to touch on, basketball recruiting again this week. Mike Woodson is out here shooting his shot on the recruiting trail uh, he has now offered 2024 forward Derek Queen, who is uh, – it's hard to find a lot on him because 2024 is so far down the road. ESPN is the only place right now that has a 2024 ranking, and they have they have Derek Queen second in the class. He's a five-star prospect, power forward, listed at 6'8", 230 out of Baltimore. He's at Montverde Academy. And it was interesting because also on Wednesday, or excuse me, Tuesday, there was a video of uh, Derek Queen, KJ Evans, who we talked about last week, working out with Carmelo Anthony, 
And while that name might not mean much to IU fans who don't pay attention to the NBA, Anthony played under Mike Woodson at, in New York. That was probably the best season he had while with the Knicks. That was the best team they had. And Anthony and Mike Woodson are still close. So <laughs> Carmelo Anthony, recruit players to IU challenge, please. I doubt he's going to be publicly doing that, but it's certainly interesting. There's certainly a connection there, I think. It's probably not a coincidence those guys were working out with Mello uh, a week or less after getting offers from IU. There's probably something going on there, though. Uh, Mello is a Baltimore native, and that is where Queen is from, uh, for one. So maybe not all conspiracy theory there. That'll do it for today's episode. We got it all in. I know that was a lot of information today. I tried to keep it uh, short as well. So that was a lot of stuff, but appreciate you guys following as always. Tomorrow we will do a full episode on Cincinnati, what to expect from them. They're a really good team. So we'll try to give you a deep dive. No guests this week to talk about them. Could not find anyone in time, but the good news is Big Ten play. We should have someone of just about every week. I know we have Western Kentucky next, but we are almost there. We'll try to find someone for Western Kentucky for you guys. But um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast. As I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a rating and review everywhere you can. Follow us on Twitter at Locked on Hoosiers. Uh, for those watching on YouTube, you can see my uh, Twitter right here. I think I did that right. And, uh, but while you guys are subscribing, head on over to the Locked on Bets podcast if you haven't already. Uh, it's the new podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. They'll give you daily picks, blowout specials, the locks of the day, the wrong team favored picks, whatever it is you could possibly need. Follow the Locked on Bets podcast wherever you get your podcast. It's brought to you by betonline.ag. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. And I uh, hope you come back. Hope you check out the YouTube channel and L-E-O.